Today, friends, we're going to make an awesome cheese grater with a Detroit Lions theme. So let's get cracking. We are going to be building with Tinkercad. We need to start by clicking Create New 3D Design. We'll name our file Cheese Grater. And I'll also add the word Lions after it. That way we can find the project if we ever want to later. Now I'm going to make this keychain size. You can scale this to whatever you want. It could be hats, anything. We're going to start the build process with an awesome shape called the trapezoid. If you type trap, you'll see several of them listed. We want this one called the double trapezoid. When we bring it out, we're going to change it with these parameters. I've got numbers I'm going to give you. Just trust me, these work for a keychain. We're going to type 48, 16, 32, 10, and 56 for the height of our cute little cheese grater. Now you'll have to wait a moment for these to snap into place. Once they do, you'll see it looks a bit like a cheese grater. Before we go any further, friends, I do want to show you something. You can grab handles in Tinkercad, but I do want you to know as soon as you do grab the handles and change them, you totally break the parameters. That, my friends, is why this project is entirely based on parameters. Now we are going to cut this out. We're going to do that by doing Control D. I'm going to make the second one a hole. And then we're just going to take away numbers from each of these. So I'm going to take away four from each. That'll give us two millimeter thick walls. So 44, 12, 28, 6, and 52. Press enter. If we select these two now and do L for align, make this one the boss, do center and center and group. It takes a moment for it to group, but if you look underneath, that's sort of like a cheese grater. You may notice that it is not as wide as a normal cheese grater. Don't worry about that as we're going to cut this in half anyhow. Let's back up to the basic shapes, bring out a normal cube. We're going to stretch this one crazy high, wider than the shape, and then we are going to take this total measurement where it is 16. We're going to cut off half of it by making this 8. If we select everything, do L for a line, and make this the boss and just choose center and the back edge. Now when we group these, we now have a spot where we can create a flat back. So we are going to build the back with the normal trapezoid. Once again, we are going to type the numbers. That base width is 48. Press enter. The top width was 32. Press enter. The height has to be 56 so that it matches. And then we're going to set the thickness to two so it matches the walls of the rest of the project. It takes a moment to snap into place. Once it does, though, we can do L for a line, choose the gray one as the boss, and line it up with that edge and the back. Now we're going to do something kind of smart. We could simply group the two pieces, but groups of groups slow Tinkercad down. So we're going to ungroup this right now and then regroup the new set of parts. If we do control G, now we've got one part and note how much quicker that grouped together. I do want to switch it back to a gray color because that works better for the rest of my project. Let's flip it 90 degrees. Notice every click inside the blue circle is 22 and a half degrees. We could also hold down shift and each click is 45 degrees. Hit D to drop, and bingo, that is the start of our cheese grater keychain. Let's return to the basic parts so we can make our cheese grater holes. We're going to start with this shape right here. I only want half of this for the cheese grater part, so we're going to cut it in half with the whole cube. Now if we click on this, you'll see that it is 20 by 20. So I'm going to take this and make it 10, which is half of 20. Now we can grab those two, do L for a line, make the pink one the boss, and center it, and then also bring it to that back edge. When we select those two and do Control G to group, bingo, we've got the cheese grater cutter. Now I'm going to make that a little longer and lower. Now I want a bunch of these, so I'm going to hold down Shift Scale and make it quite a bit smaller. Currently it was 20. I'm going to take it down to size 8. I'm going to make it a little bit longer so it's a bit like a teardrop. I think this is going to look fantastic. Now I want to put it up here. We're going to do C for cruising with that shape selected. Now I can set it up here. 
Notice it is flipped the wrong way. I am just going to rotate it like this so that it's lined up the way I want. Do notice when I click right here, we lose that living work plane. We can put the work plane back on there manually with the work plane button. I'm going to move this down a little bit because I want to leave room for an awesome logo. I'll show you that in a moment. I want at least three of these. So I'm going to take this from size eight and I'm going to take it down to size seven, maybe even stretch it a little longer just as I play with it. And now I'm going to cut the piece underneath with a sphere. Notice this has to be smaller than that other part. So I'm going to take it down to like size five. I'm going to make it a hole. I'm going to push it below zero. And then I'm going to move it over to this location and set it like that. So it's going to cut into our shape a little bit, but it's also going to come out here. I do want to leave plenty of area up here so it's easier on the 3D printer to bridge that gap. If you want to try and make this a little bit more precise, you can click on the point one nudge and lift it a little more carefully or use the control up arrow. I just want to make sure there's lots of material for the 3D printer as it completes that part. So now let's make a bunch of these. I'm going to click somewhere else so I know what I've grabbed. There's that piece. Now shift select this piece and we're going to do control D and I'm just going to nudge it to the other side. If I do shift nudge with my point one, it goes a little bit faster. And now when I let go, if I do control D and control D, it keeps that same distance all the way across. You could do some grouping to make this line up perfectly. I am just going to have fun with it. I'm going to shift select these pieces. And then I'm going to do the micro nudge to get it to the spot I like. I think that's going to be fantastic. Now I'm going to do control D. Notice it memorized that move, but I'm just going to manually put it where I want. I want this to be in between those other ones. So I'm doing like that. This one would be too many, so I'm just going to click on it and delete it. And now I want to do that same thing again. Check this out, though. If I do hide, I can grab them all now and do Control D, Shift Nudge down. And then if we do Show All, we'll be able to see it better and find out that it was pretty close. But right there would be the last one that we can really add. Friends, that is going to be our cheese grater. I'm going to grab all those right now and do control G to group. I'm going to put my work plane back down on the ground while it's grouping. And then after it does group, check it out. You can see through it. There's lots of material. That part is going to look like a cheese grater real quickly. Friends, I am making this because I am a huge lions fan. Let's add a lions logo up here. I've already made an STL. If you want to see the tutorial where I did it, it is up here. If we choose a file, I'm going to search for lions and I am looking for the lions logo text. I want the art. This is 293 millimeters. That is way larger than what I've got. I'm going to put 25 millimeters and press enter and choose import. So let's make this blue because of course it is a lion's logo. I'm going to pick that one right there and we're going to cruise it with the letter C up on the shape. Once again, it does demand that we rotate it. I'm going to bring it around like that. Now that I have clicked away, I want you to know that if you tried to scale this, it doesn't work. It floats. There's a gap. So we're going to do control Z and let me show you how to fix that. If you put the work plane on that slope, then it matches again. So that's the way to make sure it lines up the way you expect. I'm going to get this to the exact measurements I want. I'm going to set the thickness to only be 0.5 millimeters. I'm doing this because it will look good and it'll print faster on the Bamboo Labs P1S. I've got a little bit more room I can stretch and make the logo larger. I will grab them all and do L for a line to make sure it's in the middle. And let's get ready for the handle. The first thing we do is put the work plane on the bottom. If you click right up here and type bent, it will show up in the search. When you bring it out, we're going to simply set it down and once again, play with parameters. First, I'm going to make it gray. That helps with my lion's keychain. We're also going to switch to square and square. And then the outer pipe width, I'm going to use 
3. I'm going to change this dark diameter to 15. Notice that will tighten this up. And then I'm going to try both the lead-ins first at 3, bingo, and then 3 for the other one. We know that the last one is the leg to the right. I can now bring it over to this edge, make sure that I'm happy with that, and do Control d move it to the other side, and then I'm simply going to mirror it. Bingo. And I'm going to make those connect perfectly by doing W for work plane, D for drop, and I'm going to take the two of them and do Control g to group them. Put the work plane back on the normal base once they become one piece. Notice that time it did not work, so I'm just going to ungroup them, and I'm going to group them again, Control g to group, Notice you just have to be patient sometimes. And now I can grab my handle and the cheese grater, do L for align. I'm gonna do F for fit view so I can find this little dot right here and bingo, center it just like that. And there you have it friends, a cheese grater with a lion's logo. Now friends, you could scale this to make it into a hat. You can have a lot of fun adjusting it. Right now I'm gonna show you how to print it on your Bamboo Labs printer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is export the base. Notice I am not going to group the handle. I'm just going to shift select it. You do not have to group the items. You just have to have them selected. I'm gonna do export selected shapes, STL. And I'm gonna call this Cheese Grater Lions, and this will be the base. And I'll shut off cap and hit save. Now I'm going to click on the words and export them as well. Just the selected shape, STL, and this will be called words. And save it. Now we can bounce to Bamboo Studio. We're going to choose Create New Project. We're going to import those pieces. Notice I grab them at the same time. Choose Open. They are a single object, multiple parts. That way they stay aligned. I'm gonna make sure on global, I've got the quality I want. There are my 0.2 layers. Now we're gonna to go to object mode. I want the words to be the blue and I want the base to be gray. With that swapped, let's slice the plate. Notice it detects that some things are floating. I think this is still going to turn out fine, so I'm going to let it roll. Friends, let's hit print plate. I am not going to do a time lapse. Let's send it to the 3D printer. After a moment, of course, it switches to the device menu. And once it downloads, it's going to take about 50 minutes for it to print. Of course, once it has downloaded, we can click plate and monitor everything from afar. And less than an hour later, Detroit Lions cheese grater keychain. How cool is that? Friends, as I wrap up, I want to say congrats to the Lions. You guys are doing fantastic, which absolutely makes my day. I also want to say thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. Absolutely love how that group is growing, and you can learn more by checking the description of this video. Finally, friends, if you are watching, I want to thank you as well. Every time that you click that like button, share a video, add a comment, or even hit subscribe, you're helping HL Mod Tech get a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. And of course, friends, have a glorious Glorious day and keep tinkering. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. Of course, I've got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad with all sorts of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down a little farther, you will find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days. It is fully explained in this video. Of course, I do want to highlight the coupon code 25HL Tinkercad, as it'll get you 25% off any of the awesome courses at cadclass.org. Of course, you can get there by simply clicking this link.
Friends, just a quick reminder about the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me. HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.